a red green aggro deck. Kind of a kind of classic style build. Looks like Bonfire Blast Incinerate as the burn. And we saw him, I believe, in round two. And here he is, Dave Shields with uh, Blue White Delver. This is game three. So what do you like in this matchup? You know, it used to be that I liked Red Green Aggro. Yeah. Um, and then Angel was printed. And uh, Angel hey, changes the map. That card is so good. Honestly, it really depends in my mind on the board. And looking at the sideboard, I see two timely reinforcements, which is a, a help. Um, yeah. If there were three, I'd be a little bit happier. And it looks like he has the uh, the setup that's basically the Jerry T deck. Um, and so I expect he's going to slow down the game, um, use Timelies to stall out, use uh, Divine Offering if he saw swords, and he probably did. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, this use, is game three after. Yeah, that. use images to copy Strangle Root Geist and other things, and then end up on Sphinx. On the other side of the table, um, we might see Mana Barbs come out. And uh, I'm actually curious to see how this is going to go. Plummet and Stinger Fling Spider definitely going to be coming into play for Ian Duke. Or coming in, you know, into the deck. Turn two, both players with land and nothing else. And look at that Mirage Forest. <laughs> Thought Scour, end of turn for David Shields. Burying a Ponder and a Sea Chrome Coast. Oh, pardon me, there was already a Ponder used. Uh, burying a different Ponder, though, and Sea Chrome Coast. For those of you who are just joining us, this is round eight of the 10 rounds here of Star City Games Open Series here in Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm Adrian Sullivan, joined in the booth by Rob Doherty. You're watching SCG Live. We have a third land from David Shields. And uh, if he didn't do anything before, he's not gonna do anything now. And there it is. Third land for Ian Duke. Saxon Evolving Wilds. That actually is a card that uh, that Jerry did not play. And he also has one Cavern of Souls. Another card that was not in that list. And I think that might be um, at some point deciding that there was a, a maybe half of a land too much for the 60 cards. Sure. Sure. And, uh, um, tw and tweaking the mana to his own... Uh his own liking, yeah. perhaps a result of uh, some play testing. You might remember David Shields from his win in uh, Grand Prix Dallas last year. Look at that. The difference between that plains and that forest. <laughs> Indeed. And we have, uh, have a wolf flashing out. From the trees. And a turn. Is that a mana leak? On tap. And Ian hopefully having the double threat in order to make that wolf worth it. Sword. And down comes his sword. This makes every creature that Ian might put out into a threat, but he has none right now. And uh, what do we have to deal with the sword after boarding? Potentially divine offering times one in the sideboard and none in the main. Oblivion ring as well. And then other than that, it's kill every creature with this number, gut shots, etc. That's uh that could be a game changing card. And we see a ponder off of a snapcaster mage. Tapping David Shields down. This means that Ian Duke has a large number of cards that he can bring to play to make that sword live. Indeed. So uh, we could uh, we could see a equipped guy swinging here. Right, right. So I see a Mirage Forest, an Ice Age Forest. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the words of Dan Bach, Ian is liking to show his opponent that he's been playing for a while, but he's uh, he's he's too he's not willing to put forth the effort to get a particular land. <laughs> <laughs> He may be making a statement about how long he's been playing, or he may have just dug through his draft pile. And... Which again says how long he's been playing, though. <laughs> Indeed. You know? I didn't ever realize that that was a tell until uh, Dan Bach uh, told me that. Dan Bach, famous for qualifying for the Pro Tour, perhaps knocking out uh, some people that I know, and uh, then showing up with 60 land at the event. 
Nation. But at least a free ticket to Japan. So he really <laughs> played in the Pro Tour with he 60 Land? He really played in the Pro Tour with 60 Land. Impressive. Uh, I remember being quite frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. Particularly because I had built a deck that um, gave Steve OMS his so, best constructed finish and brought Dave Williams his first top eight. So is that a, is that just a statement of I just couldn't build anything competent for this this uh, this event? Uh, we have a human on uh, cavern on David Shields' part. Wolfier Wolf Silverheart. Yikes! I think actually what it was was he went there to trade. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the ticket. <laughs> All right. Well, he did fulfill his obligation of playing in the event. <laughs> His opponent must have been so happy. There's a feature match on uh, online. You can check it out. Um, if you go back to the Pro Tour Tokyo coverage, round one feature match, Dan Bach. I can't remember who he played, but uh, yeah. <laughs> now, usually they look at the deck list before choosing the feature match. It's an interesting feature match choice there. So what can he do about this silver heart? I mean, the Silver Heart is a lot more easy to handle. Between cards like Dismember and uh, and Vapor Snag, there's lots of things he can do at instant speed to get rid of the Silver Heart. Now, he has to have them, of course. We see his own sword. I think I see a Timely in his hand. Uh, do you see anything else there? I think I see an Angel. Oh, Sword, sword Go. If he does not have a Dismember in his hand, that Silver Heart is going to be a problem. Oh, so imagine, we have a we have a wolf run in play. Yes. Yeah. So, imagine if he equips, there's a dismember, and then he responds by dropping a wolf. Yes. <laughs> Surprise. Okay, another land, another wolf run. That the uh, the wolf run sword combination is quite powerful here. That opponent, by the way, in the 2001 Pro Tour Tokyo for Dan Bach was Matthias Jorsted. Interesting. Looks like we got no equip, just no to equip. serve. Yeah. That's two mana no. that Dave Ian is saving by no, not he, doing that. He had uh, he had enough to equip and give trample if he uh, if he had wanted to get his uh, get the hit with a sword in. I think he's assuming he's, that something will happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously there's a lot of instants that could mess with that plan, so. I mean, between Vapor Snag and Dismember... And another sword. Sword two. Wow. Looking like a kind of kind of a clunky hand here. I think I do see a vapor snag in David Shield's hand. And off up he goes. Vapor snag. Those of you wanting to read a little bit more about the Dan Bach incident, need only go to StarCityGames.com and search for the Dan Bach incident. <laughs> Aptly named. Yeah. Okay, back to the match at hand. We have a Wolfier Silverheart in hand for Ian Duke. Two Swords of War and Peace in play. And David Shields on the other side of the table. He's looking to equip this Snapcaster unless the burn spell comes and hits it. So maybe he'll save the mana. He's tight on mana right now. Yeah, he's been digging through his deck but not hitting a ton of land. Mana Leak can stop that Wilfer Silverheart. Legacy Challenge players, your winners the next round have been posted. Please find your seats. Looks like Ian has an awkwardly expensive hand with the five drop creature and the multiple swords. Do you like equipping here? I mean, clearly that's what David is doing. Yeah, saying, I, I, I like equipping here. Like, even. Uh, there it uh, is. Oh, what do we got? Ancient Grudge? There's a Grudge. Yeah. Yeah, you have to let it hit so you can mana leak the uh, wolf on the way back down. That mana leak won't stop a bird or an elf, though, yeah. from coming into, yeah, ruin I mean, into fun. Obviously, there are the uh, low-cost creatures would be uh, yeah. very attractive here. Three mana, another <laughs> sword, sword. Number three. Do you even bother casting it? I'm not it? sure why sword came down. I guess he's playing around the leak. I mean, why? Though, if you play around the leak the whole game, you might as well just have your land be destroyed. Well, yeah. he uh, he he may be uh, he may be waiting for. The he double? may 
he may be holding up his opponent's mana, waiting to draw. If he only has that one creature in his hand, which seems likely, then hold, making his opponent leave two up forever buys him a lot of right. time. He's losing three lands to make his... Oh, is that an and, amass the components? And here we have the, t the tapping out. Wow. Oh, boy. I don't... Okay, so if he a... was playing around Mana Leak, he's, uh, he's achieved his, his objective, his window. Although, likely the, uh, the creature won't stick around, given the additional cards just drawn. David Shields looks like he's going to bury a Phantasmal image. Interesting, because I do like the image to copy a uh, Snapcaster to hit the Vapor Snag again. Indeed. His, uh, the rest of his hand must be pretty amazing. Attack for two. I did see at least two Restoration Angels. Restoration Angel can do the same trick, but it is a lot more mana. Yes. Especially with his uh, mana issues he's had up till now. And there's the Silverheart. And a pass. Snag. Oh, yeah. ouch. Leak still in hand, and now completely untapped with Restoration Angels in hand. We are now in that kind of fairies-like positioning where David can just say go yes, and do so much scary stuff. Let's see if we get the big threat bird of paradise here. Ian uh, waving his hand over to try to get the graveyard revealed. Ah, Strangle Geist. Root Geist. Double sorted Geist, perhaps? The more all in that Ian goes, the more that he's gonna get really devastated by a Restoration Angel. Uh, David Shield says, I guess that's okay. We see Sword our first equip. One. I think we might be seeing an attack here. Not getting greedy. In for four, plus happy the hand. With the, uh, happy with the singly equipped. So Angel makes the snappy comeback and flash. And I think we're going to see a vapor, vapor snag. Snapcaster is such a powerful card. Yep, Snapcaster flickering away and then returning um, the use of Vapor Snag, popping Strangle Root Geist back to Ian's hand. One damage. And his, his life continues to get chewed away. This leaves uh, Ian at 11 with five power on the table on the other side. He doesn't Maybe. even equip it, or sorry, um, lay it down he doesn't, again. He doesn't relay the Geist, interesting. Does he have combusts in his board? He does have one combust in the board. He also has Plummet. But he didn't choose to play it when... Uh, okay, there's the combust. combust. So, Even obviously so. not not Plummet. He would have played that while his opponent yeah, was tapped out. Yeah, hopefully he would. Some people have a lot of end of your turnitis. So. Yes. Instant means as late as possible. <laughs> <laughs> we might see... Um, Oh, uh, the Ian seems to be playing pretty carefully around permission, so I think uh, I don't think he would miss that one. I agree. David thinking about perhaps just dropping the Sphinx. The option otherwise is just to sit back and I believe another Restoration Angel. That's not too shabby either. He can have seven mana, lay the Angel, use it for a trick, still have the mana leak up, yep. and if there is no need for a trick, just go Angel and Moreland Hunt token. And, uh, and his opponent is down to nine, so uh, I think the, uh, the patient play here is going to be the better one. There's the Geist again. I, I seem yeah. to recall that card from not so long ago. A leak just to burn up the mana? Well, if uh, Ian does not pay for this, then there's no threat in play. And if Ian does pay for it, then actually a uh, Restoration Angel Snapcaster um, Vapor Snag puts Ian at 8. 
And then I believe, let's see what we got. Okay, uh, that works too. Another snap caster with, uh, with leap the leap again. Yep, snap well, leap. Players, that is time in the round. That your player can your turn. To see it is, it is not looking good for Ian. This is going to be a birds. So many swords and not a single hit yet with him. There's a Pilgrim. Untap for David Shields. And uh, you said you saw another angel in David's hand, it, yes? It might not have been, um, but I believe it was an angel. That is, uh, is going to be harsh. Consecrated Sphinx. Ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know, the StarSleepGames.com sells booth. At this time, we will not be paying cash for cars anymore tonight. We will still take in cards for trade. And we will still be open for until the end of uh, Swiss Games. But we will no longer be paying cash for cards tonight. If you wish to get cash for cards, we will be open all day tomorrow and we'll be at that time. David Shields coming in with two Snapcaster mages. Tiago, what do you say? And it looks like a pass. Ian Duke looks at the top of his library, checking to see if there's a miracle yeah. there. He does have yeah. some in his deck. Yeah, Ian is uh, pretty desperate for the life a sword hit would give. Interestingly, he plays a card out of his hand. Ian's draw was definitely clunky. No, oh, yeah, very. Um, very, very heavy. If this, uh, um, that pilgrim earlier on to go with those swords would have been a, a much, could have created a much different game for us. These players have only a few minutes left. They have a little bit more time than is actually on the clock, but still not very much. Um, a lot of times our feature matches do start a little bit later just because of the extra time to set up. Avison Pilgrim gets equipped. So uh, likely he uh, he played that land so he could equip, equip, and then give trample if necessary. But nope, I am wrong. In for four. A Restoration Angel can't stop this. However, like, a Restoration does, Angel does bringing have... a Snapcaster can stop it. Yes, indeed. And what do we have left, for instance, in the uh, in the now? Graveyard? That's assuming that there's a day. A Consecrated Sphinx, that's assuming that that last card, that white card in the back, is an angel. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it is, but I, I thought it was. It might be another yeah. card. Yeah, I think I see an angel in there. There and it is. It, and it makes his, uh, his it play is. make much more sense. One, two, three, four. And, uh, was that a vapor snag I saw in the yard? There should be one more vapor snag in the yard. Boom, yeah. snag. So brutal. And we've got... So the one damage from the snag, three damage from the flyer, and potentially, uh, can, he, can he make a spirit at this point? Uh, he has, uh, does he have any creatures in his? Oh yeah, 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 he has a combusted, uh, a combusted angel from before. Indeed. Three mana. We're doing a bonfire for one. Bonfire for one doesn't change this math. Still, uh, still dead to the token. He might have a combustion hand still. Indeed. Should he have the combustion hand, David Shields is mostly out of gas except for the consecrated sphinx. In his hand, yes. waiting to fill that, up the tank. That is plummet. Yes, and plummet comes down. Boom. Soon as mana leak mana is no longer an option. That spirit is amazing. That is a good one. Casper the friendly ghost there. Not so friendly when you're only at four. And it looks like he just drew another angel. <laughs> 
the hits never stop. A little less intimidating without the uh, Snapcasters to back them up. Sphinx hitting the table. Yep, here comes the Sphinx. <laughs> In this kind of situation, yeah, we are in extra turns now. This is turn zero. Now, uh, in this kind of situation, regardless of the, the turn situation, uh, turn one now with Ian, um, that Sphinx, so devastating. There are so few cards left that Ian can use to answer it. When, yeah, when, they, when, these, uh, when a blue-white deck gets the Sphinx on the table, and uh, yeah, it is, it is very, very hard to win at that point. I mean, uh, a Stinger Fling Spider from uh, Green Sun Zenith could come out of this. Um, the second plummet. This is all assuming that a mana leak doesn't stop it. Uh, plummet won't be stopped, but there he's allowed to draw his cards. We see a pilgrim. Who badly wants reach. Equip. Land, my favorite mountain. And says go. And now if he doesn't upkeep a plummet, then I think that's all. Okay. Dead? <laughs> okay. Ian Duke slow rolling the uh, the concession there. Yep. And Just making sure David attacks. Yeah, we had a we had a, uh, a classic uh, issue of the aggro deck uh, getting a slow start, which.